If you were president, what would be your strategy for ending the war in Iraq? Just come home. We just marched in. We can just come home. Ron Paul says to a lot of people eager to hear this message, you can be anti-war and be a conservative. In fact, he says, if you're a real small government conservative, you have to be anti-war. And his message, not only against the war, but in favor of small government, is resonating. Including, interestingly enough, from soldiers. According to one study, Congressman Paul received more campaign cash from members of the military than did any other Republican presidential candidate. I served four tours of duty in Vietnam as a U.S. Army sniper, and I was wounded 11 times in action. If it weren't for Congressman Ron Paul and his staff, I wouldn't be alive today. Ron Paul helped me receive the medical care I needed. He helped me get the medals I earned but never received. Ron Paul is a veteran who cares about people like me. Yeah, I'm with Iraq Veterans Against the War, and uh, I had a couple questions for you. I okay. served uh, between Gulf Wars, flying, enforcing the no-fly zone. Um, do you support the immediate withdrawal of all occupied forces? I absolutely do. The sooner the better. Okay. And do you support reparations for the destruction of corporate pillaging of Iraq so Iraqi people can control the lives of their, their own lives in the future? I do not support the idea that American taxpayers should be taxed further for reparations. Is this what you're referring to? Right. That we go back and repair what we have done? Right. No, I do not support okay. that. Uh, although I know a lot of people would have great sympathy and assume this moral responsibility. But that was a mistake made, but it wasn't made by people like standing here. And I don't think further taxation, and I complain about this all the time, I use the example that we the taxpayer are taxed to go over and bomb bridges, and then we're taxed to rebuild the bridges at the same time our bridges are falling down here and we're broke. So I would say quit doing it and start taking care of our own bridges and our own borders here at home. So although there can be a case made for this reparations, I do not endorse it. Okay. Uh, the final question is, do you support full benefits, adequate health care, including mental health, and other supports for returning servicemen and women? Absolutely, and that's where we've been derelict. We've been nickel and dime and some of these things, and we've heard so many cases about Walter Reed. I think it's a real tragedy. And uh, I spend probably a third of my time uh, in my congressional office dealing with veterans affairs because so many of them get pushed around. And we are literally having hundreds of thousands now looking for help and benefits coming back from the current war. Uh, that is a top priority. National defense, taking care of our veterans, should be the very top priority along with equal justice under the law. Okay, thank you, sir. Very good, thank you. I think we're going to be going. Clinton, Barack Obama, Rudy Giuliani, McCain, four candidates in the race for the Oval Office. But when it comes to raising campaign cash, guess who is hitting a home run with the military? Michael Barone is a senior writer for U.S. News and World Report and also our Fox News political analyst. So who does the military love? Uh, well, according to a website that's researched it, the number one fundraiser from military uh, personnel, Congressman Ron Paul of the 14th Congressional District of Texas. I want to be president, not because I want to run your lives, I don't want to be president to run your economy, mm -hmm. and I don't want to be president to run the world. I want to be president to restore liberty. If you were president of the United <clears throat> States, would you need to go to Congress to get authorization to take military action against Iran's nuclear facilities? Uh, you sit down with your attorneys and tell you what you have to do. This idea of going and talking to attorneys totally baffles me. Why don't we just open up the Constitution and read it? You're not allowed to go to war without a declaration of war. So why should we send hundreds of thousands of Americans to die in a civil war? I mean, are we over in, in Russia right now, over Chechnya? I mean, it wouldn't make any sense. Did we go to war over Hong Kong? You know, it, uh, it, we should follow the Constitution and the advice of the founders. Don't go looking for dragons to slay. I mean, uh, why should we go and, uh, and, and provoke and, and look for trouble? We should talk to people, negotiate, be diplomatic, and trade with people. We do much better trading with Vietnam than we did with fighting with them, and we lost 60,000 men there. This is a philosophic and, and uh, foreign policy problem because what the president was saying was just a continuation of Woodrow Wilson's making the world safe for democracy. There's nothing wrong with spreading our values around the world. 
But it is wrong to spread it by force. We should spread it by setting an example and do, go in doing a good job here. Threatening Pakistan and threatening Iran makes no sense whatsoever. We went in and I supported going after the Al-Qaeda into Afghanistan, but lo and behold, the neocons took over. They, they forgot about Osama bin Laden and what they did. They went into nation building not only in Afghanistan, they went unjustifiably over into Iraq. And that's why we're in this mess. Mayor Giuliani, both Governor Huckabee Excuse me. Excuse me. Too often the American people won't see it in that light. We are good and wonderful and perfect, and we are only going to deliver our goodness to them. We have two suggestions to the people uh, that we try to do so much good. We go over and we tell them, you do it our way or we're going to bomb you. And then if they do it our way, we subsidize them. What about the alternative of neither bombing nor subsidizing and trying to get along with people and talking to people and trading with people? I supported going after Osama bin Laden, and I don't vote for very many things in Washington, but I supported that authority and the funding for that, but that was mishandled because when we had him trapped in Tora Bora, we backed off and said, we'll let the Pakistanis take care of it, and lo and behold, he escapes and now he's in the mountains of Pakistan. I think we should deal in a very, very targeted way to go after the leadership of Al-Qaeda and go after Osama bin Laden. And here we have Osama bin Laden in Pakistan. They have nuclear weapons, and we're giving them money. And we forgot about him, and now we're over in, uh, in Iraq in a war that's bogging us down, and we have forgotten against, uh, about dealing with the people that attacked us. And here you have a hypothetical attack that you're dealing with. We ought to be dealing with the one we have right now. Sorry. Congressman Ron Paul, how much longer should the United States stay in Iraq? The sooner we come home, the better. If they declare there's no progress in September, we should come home. It was a mistake to go, so it's a mistake to stay, and we're more threatened now by staying. It's in our national self-interest and for our national security.